There's no reason to become alarmed, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your flight. By the way, is there anyone on board who knows how to fly a plane? Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Avoiding Real Estate Turbulence Podcast. This is your pilot, John Lafferty, with Century 21 Town & Country. And this is your co-pilot, Tony Abate, with Ross Mortgage. And we are your real estate pilots. Our job is to be your real estate advocate and also make sure you're educated about the buying and selling process. We'll keep you informed throughout until we get you safety to close. In a real estate transaction, there are many reasons why you can encounter turbulence. Today, we are going to discuss uh, top seller interior tips to get your home ready to sell and avoid turbulence. Yeah. Boy, John, you know, I, I, I handle the finance side of the transaction when it comes to this topic. I've got the easy part, you know, because this has got to be, uh, you know, a, a, a tough conversation sometimes with sellers, but so darn important with regard to how does that home look? Uh, you know, what's that buyer going to see when they walk in the door and you got to help that seller frame. So last episode, we talked about things that can, uh, uh, be impactful on the outside of the home. So now we're walking in the front door and uh, tee us off. Where, where do we start when we're thinking about uh, uh, the kind of things on the inside of the home that a seller needs to take into consideration? Yeah, thanks, Tony. Um, just to go back, uh, uh, something you mentioned, it, it is a very delicate conversation, but it's a necessary conversation. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it, it needs to be handled in such a way that y- you don't offend a seller uh, about maybe some of the choices that they've made uh, in colors or uh, flooring, um, wallpaper, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, lighting. Um, so you try to be as uh, objective as possible, but also you want to be as informational and as honest with them as possible. So you're absolutely right. Uh, when When you're walking in the front door, You always want to look at it from that person's perspective. So when I walk in the front door, what's the first thing I see as as a buyer? What Mm -hmm. am I looking at? Am I looking down a hallway? Am I looking at a wide open entry? What do I see on the flooring, the walls, the ceiling? Um, when I look left and I look right, what, what things are my lo- am I looking at? And so invariably, I, I think typically one of the first things they notice are What's on the walls? Mm, yeah. Paint, mm-hmm. right? And so um, some people, when they buy their house, love bold colors and uh, because it goes with their furniture or it's a color they've always wanted to paint a certain room or a hallway because they love that color. And while they may love it, it's not necessarily the best choice in order to sell the home. Mm-hmm. Now, I understand some sellers get a little offended by that because they don't they feel like well i I want to sell to somebody who who really appreciates my tastes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's not I, I I can understand that, but it's not really about that. If you want to get the highest and best price uh, from the largest amount of buyers, why would you have choose paint colors that are going to turn off a certain segment of them? Mm-hmm. Um, so we have that discussion. And one of the things that I always recommend to sellers is we need to think about warm colors that are, uh, that are, um, you know, that people generally like that, that tend to be more neutral, that can go with a lot of things, yeah. go a bunch of different ways. Mm-hmm. You know, right now popular are your, your very light blues and mm-hmm. light grays. Um, those are, those are a couple examples of more warm and neutral colors. And that's kind of the theme you'd want to keep throughout the house. Now, does that mean you have to paint every bedroom and every room? No, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. But when we're talking entryway and living room, kitchen, um, rooms where people spend a lot of time together, those are rooms that we really want to concentrate on if if we're looking at possibly needing to repaint. Yeah, yeah. So I, I it, you 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 have to help the seller think, I'm guessing that um the buyer has to be able to see themselves living in your home, Mr. Seller. I mean, because if if you can't see yourself living there, how can you get excited about the purchase and decide to take the next step? And uh that that's I know I I can remember, you know, my wife and I have 
you know, buying one of our homes. I have I have a lot of difficulty seeing the change in a room. And so walking in that door, that place needs to appeal to me because I'm going to assume it's always going to look that way. Is is the way I look at it all that odd, or do you you know do people need to be able to make a pretty quick decision and be able to say, yeah, I can see myself here? Or, yeah, there, yeah, there's there's truth to that. Uh, however, I, I will say, and and following that line of thought, mm-hmm. there are realtors out there who will say to a seller, take down all your personal photos, mm-hmm. take everything off the fridge. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to keep it as neutral as possible. Now, if a house is inundated with family photos and pictures on walls and rooms that's one thing okay we we gotta we gotta take some of those down Mm -hmm. we we don't want that everywhere but at the same time you know having some photos of the family in in the house i'm not a proponent of removing everything from the walls Mm -hmm. because if they if you have your pictures there it they may not be able to see themselves living there yeah okay let's let's not get over yeah. uh you know over dramatic about it yeah. uh, having some photos of the family is fine um but but i but to your point yeah you're right a buyer wants to see themselves living there sometimes depending if you're talking entry level or if you're talking a second a second home a, a buy up for mm-hmm. for a seller sometimes it's the lifestyle of the seller that can sell a home. So the the seller makes all the right choices and they have this beautiful furniture that they have in certain rooms and they have it set up in such a way, um, probably talked with their realtor about staging a room, yeah. moving furniture around so the room flows better. There's a, there's a real art to that as well and that becomes important. Um, Sometimes that helps sell a home, the yeah. lifestyle of the seller that they're, that they're presenting to the buyer. Um, it, but it all has to make sense. You, you know, having a uh, beautiful leather furniture in a room and then, um, orange walls, uh, <laughs> with carpet yeah. doesn't make sense. So it's, it's all, anyone. yeah, it's all, it all has to make sense. So you're absolutely right. So a buyer needs to be able to see themselves in the house. So you're selling that. Mm-hmm. And that's why some of the things that we're going to cover here, I think, uh, play an important role in that. And the other thing it does too is it removes barriers that pop up in a seller yeah. in a buyer's mind, whether they're aware of them or not. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's subconscious things that they see and don't really pay attention to, but in their mind, it's creating no, no, oh, this yeah. isn't the right house. No, mm-hmm. it's not the right house. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that really resonates. I can remember the last time I walked into a new construction home that was for sale. Nobody's ever lived there. And uh, it was very, very appealing. And what was in it? It, it, There were things that the builder put in there that helped a potential buyer see themselves in that home. So they spent money on things in that new construction home that they were never going to sell to somebody. So there was tasteful furniture. There was, there was, uh, there there was uh, tasteful things hanging from the wall. And, and it, it, it's impactful, isn't it? And I mean, if I if I go the reverse, if a if a builder were to try to sell a home and every room was empty, yeah. that's a, that's that's a little that's a tough sell, isn't it, John? It, it is a yeah. tough sell, and and so that's a conversation that uh, that I also have with a seller if they're going to be leaving, and mm-hmm. so the house is going to be vacant at some point. If it makes sense, we try to do pictures ahead of time mm-hmm. to get. Uh, to capture the furniture in certain rooms. Um, sometimes you don't have that luxury, and that's when you have the conversation about staging a home, actually having renting furniture to be placed in homes. Uh, there's a reason that uh, models in new construction developments help sell those homes. Yeah. There's a reason that everything has uh, furniture in it, every room, a, a fridge is there, mm-hmm. even the basement. They finish the basements to look phenomenal so that you as a buyer maybe want to finish your basement for the additional yeah. 40000 that they're going to charge you. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you probably see some elements in a home that a seller doesn't think twice about. They've lived with her for a long time, but can definitely be perceived as a negative within a home. Um, tell me about some of those kind of things and, and how you have that conversation with sellers. Sure. One of the things that we come across in, in, in older homes, um, in, in certain communities Popcorn ceilings. Popcorn ceilings, yeah. Uh, or fondly known as acoustic ceilings, cottage cheese, um, <laughs> or fondly known as lumpy. Lumpy. 
<laughs> None of which are appealing names. Not Lumpy Rutherford, <laughs> but Lumpy, no. Not appealing. Yeah. Um, so basically what happens to these ceilings over time because they're porous they, – let's back up. So they were originally designed to absorb sound. Mm-hmm. And there was a reason that people put them on because uh, hallways, if you had wood floors in the home – uh, this just the the sound of the footsteps or shoes walking on the wood floors would echo throughout the house. And if you're in a living room, you don't want to hear somebody walking down the hallway. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're in the living room and somebody's having a conversation on one side, you don't want to be able to hear it echoing on the other side. So the acoustic ceilings had a purpose mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, that have since long outlived their their span. Yeah. Uh, most people look at that and say it's ugly, yeah. um, and it kind of is. They're, it's a porous surface, so over time they yellow, they discolor, um, unless you paint them, and you have to do that. Uh, you have to keep up with that. Otherwise, it, it becomes really discolored. It doesn't look so good. Yeah. Um, you know, and the other thing that – that I think people have a little bit of an issue with with acoustic ceilings is they can create shadows because of the way that okay. it just absorbs the light. Mm-hmm. So it, it can create weird shadows in rooms and you think, why, I, wow. why is the room dark over here? I don't get <laughs> it. There's We got the front window right there facing south. I don't know. It's because it's absorbing the wow. light. So okay. it's another thing that, um, that, that, that it does. But anyways – it's something that we have a conversation about. Now, couple choices. Either A, you scrape it off and have it removed. Um, it may or may not have asbestos. You don't know until you start scraping it. And if it has asbestos, now you got to get the guys out with the hazmat suits sure. and you're going to pay a bunch of money to do that. Second thing you could do is if you have a tall enough ceiling, just drywall over oh, it. Oh, okay. Sure. sure. And cover it up. Mm-hmm. Or – cheaper panel over it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But most of the time, honestly, um, I think people just leave it and, mm-hmm. and sell it. Um, but it's a con- it's worth a conversation. Sure. Yeah. So sellers need to know it, 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 it may have an impact on buyers and they need to be ready for that, I guess. That's right. Okay. So, um, and yeah, that's right. So mm-hmm. we, we have that conversation. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the things we talk about. Another thing that we, we discuss is when we're in a house and it's wall to wall carpeting. Okay. And, if the house was built in the 50s, 40s, 50s, into the early 60s, there's a decent chance it's got hardwood underneath that carpet. Mm-hmm. So we try and check to see if there is hardwood. Sometimes the seller knows. Sometimes they don't know. They bought the house with the carpet, and they just – they never uh, they never made a change. Yeah. And so uh, if the carpet's in decent shape, we have a discussion about would you be willing to possibly remove that because hardwood floors sell better. Sure. Uh, more people like that. If the carpet – if they're not interested in removing the carpet and it's in good shape and it's clean, um, well, then, uh, then, then, we, then we move on to other things mm-hmm. to see what else we can do to make the house more appealing. Yeah. Um, maybe we have the carpet clean so it's, it's really nice and, uh, and, and it looks real good uh, and the, the – the, the fibers are standing up again. They're not all flat. Yeah. So um, that's an important thing too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we move on to fixtures and faucets. One of the things that I'm looking at as I'm walking through the house with the seller is I'm looking at the lighting that they have. Is it older? Is it newer? Um, any chandeliers or hanging lamps. Um, <laughs> came across, uh, and, and my parents actually had one of these in their house when I was growing up. They had one of these old oil lamps. Do you remember? Did, have you ever come across one of these? Not a genuine so, oil lamp, no. So, like a hanging oil lamp. No, so okay. let me explain this. So <laughs> uh, we, we have a statue in the middle of this lamp. You have a top, you have a bottom, and you have these bars going all the way around it. Okay. okay. And in between these bars are wires all the way around this. Okay. And then you have some fake plants in there. <laughs> so it looks like a, like a garden. Almost, okay. okay? Yep, yep. And then mm-hmm. you have this oil that sits in the bottom of this mm-hmm. lamp. Now you turn this lamp on, it has a light on the top. Mm-hmm. So what happens is the oil gets pulled up oh, through the yes. stems mm-hmm. yeah. to the top, and then it runs down the wire and drips. <laughs> right. And so yeah. 
Uh, I, I've uh, I've come across more than a few of those, wow. and I'm always amazed when I see them. Mm-hmm. It, but it just tells me that a seller's been there a very very yeah, long time. Yeah. The '60s have called right, and yeah. they want their lighting back. <laughs> <laughs> so we look at we look at fixtures because it's it, it's an, it can be an important thing um, in in a buyer's mind, telling them how old the home is, mm-hmm. how much work they may have to do. Maybe that means the electrical hasn't been updated. Okay. Maybe this is something that's going through their mind. Wow, if that's the lighting, um, uh, what else uh, didn't update? Well, well, maybe we should look and see if uh, uh, you know the there's a GFI in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. So it, it triggers things in their mind, and especially a good realtor who's a buyer's agent, it'll trigger stuff in their mind and say, okay – Got to pay more attention sure. to some of these other things to see, are there two prong outlets all over the main rooms? Okay, that means yeah. none of them are grounded, most likely. Mm-hmm. That's going to be an expense for my buyer. So it triggers those things. And so you want to create a little bit of an experience, right? And mm-hmm. so um, the the fixtures have something to do with that in, in bathrooms as well mm-hmm. uh, and, and faucets. Yeah. If the faucets are all beat up, you might want to think about changing them, especially in the bathrooms and the kitchen. Yeah. Um, if they're in okay shape, then we probably leave them, but we at least have that discussion. You know, it, that's I think yeah. that's an important thing. Well, and I think that's the kind of thing that a seller can do that really changes the look of a room without spending a lot of money. So it can be well worthwhile to at least consider that as a seller, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it doesn't have to be expensive. You don't have to spend a hundred dollars mm-hmm. on a on a light, a new light fixture, um, yeah, or to go into a bathroom or yeah. to go into a room. Um, the sconce lights are fine and mm-hmm. they're inexpensive and they look modern. Yeah, so those are pretty simple fixes. Yeah, yeah. John, do you ever work with the seller and you walk in the home and the home itself is fine, but it's it's just a. I mean, it is just a mess. Do you run into that from time to time? I do, yeah. I do. And so, when I come across that where there's a lot of clutter, mm-hmm. debris, um, oh boy, I uh, I had this uh, hoarder one time, oh, no. <laughs> self admitted. Uh-huh. When I talked to them on the phone, they said, "You are. I, I'm just warning you. Uh, I'm a hoarder." And so I don't want you to be shocked when I show up. I said, look, you know, I've been in houses where things have been pretty bad. Mm -hmm. And so I said, thanks for letting me know, but I'll be fine. And uh, and I showed up and they were not lying. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. It was a two-story home, a colonial. And every room, including the basement in that house, had stuff piled from floor to probably, oh, I'd say four feet, five feet tall with pathways so you <laughs> so they could access everyone so that was the kitchen that was the garage mm-hmm. basement master bedroom other bedrooms uh, it was i've never seen anything wow. like it wow wow so we have the conversation and of course they say i, I know i got a lot of stuff and we're going to we're going to declutter we're going to throw stuff out we're going to mm-hmm. get rid of stuff and i said okay that's great um those people understand that, generally speaking. Sometimes a seller doesn't realize how much stuff they have. Yeah. And so the always the, sort of the fallback is, well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it down in the basement. We'll get it out of here. Depending on the amount of stuff that mm-hmm. they have, clutter and debris and everything else that they have, eh, Maybe the basement's okay mm-hmm. if it's not going to fill up the basement and and really make the basement feel crowded. Colonials typically have smaller basements, sure. right? Mm-hmm. It, uh, yep. The new ones have pretty much full basements. But the older Colonials built in the 60s and 70s and your Warrens and Sterling Heights, they don't have full basements. Yeah. They have partial basements. And so you start moving stuff into those basements, pretty soon y- you have no room to walk around. A buyer walks into that basement and says, Holy crap, this is a really tiny basement. Yeah, this isn't yeah, going to yeah. work for me. Others will say, well, we'll just move it into the garage. To which I say, well, if I got a choice between the basement or the garage, I'll take the garage, sure. moving stuff in there. But what I'd really rather have you do is rent a storage yeah, unit and yeah. move everything off site. Yeah. That's, 
That's the best thing to do uh, when you're thinning out closets from clothes. So we're going to summer. You don't need those winter clothes anymore. Mm -hmm. Pack them away. Get them out of the house. Winter boots, same thing. Pack them away. Get them out of the house. Things that you're not going to use till probably fall, pack them up. Get them out of the house. Clean off those countertops. um, Keep them clear. Yeah. As much as possible. So, yeah, we have a full conversation and we go room to room and we really we really discuss ways to make rooms look bigger and and more presentable and closets bigger. That's yeah. all important because if a if a buyer looks in a closet and it's full from mm-hmm. wall to wall of stuff, well, what's their well, I don't know if we we may this may actually not be enough room yeah. for us for our stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, we may this this house just may not work for us. Or you have a huge oversized bed in a thirteen by eleven <laughs> room. Yeah. It's going to make that you're not going to have room for a dresser on the other side, most likely. Yeah. So it makes that room feel really tight. So um, positioning things, staging things. So we we have that discussion too. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, that's that's a big one, and that's something that we really jump after. Yeah, you know, it's worthwhile for a seller. I mean, when you're looking at the idea, you, you want to maximize your dollar. You want to get as much as you can for the house. Room size is critical. And perception is, you know, is perception's reality, isn't it, in a lot of cases. And so if that room looks smaller just because of what's in it or, or, or disorganization, whatever, it could cost that seller money. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. One of the, uh, one, one of the other things too that we, that we, <sighs> boy, it's a tough subject to broach sometimes. What's odors. That? Oh, odors. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, I love dogs. I do. I had them growing up. Uh, not so fond of cats, mm-hmm. but you know, I, I still pet them and everything, <laughs> but uh, I'm just not a cat person. Yeah. Nothing against cats for, for those of you that don't cats. But um, so I, I understand why people have animals. I, I get it. But animals smell. They smell. Yeah. They, mm-hmm. they do. And so, when they lay on the carpet, their natural oils, their natural odor, it just – it attaches itself over time. And if you're the homeowner living there, mm-hmm. well, you get used to it. You don't you don't know that your house smells like the dog. Yeah. Yeah. You have no idea. As much as you vacuum and clean, sometimes it's just not enough mm-hmm. to do that. But – so I, I try to broach that subject because I know it can be a sensitive subject. Well, well what do you want us to do? Get rid of our dog for the next uh, – <laughs> No, I don't want you to go that far, but maybe we should think about shampooing the carpets. Maybe we should think about if yeah. you're going to leave this uh, love seat or sofa here, maybe we should think about having that clean professionally just to make it smell clean, just to freshen up the room. Um, so, yeah, pet odors are are one thing that um, that we certainly come across mm-hmm. a lot. Um, more people have dogs. So, so yeah, we, we try to take that head on and, and address it. Um, because if I notice it, mm-hmm. every buyer that walks through that door is going to notice it too. Now, if they love dogs, you're like, oh, they 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 have a dog. This is great. <laughs> I wonder what they have. Yeah. There are some of those buyers, but I'd say the majority of them mm-hmm. would love to walk into a house and not know if you had a dog and then find out you did. Well put. Yeah. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And one of the, and the other and the other part of that discussion um, with with regards to pets is if you have a dog, um, there are some people that are deathly afraid of dogs. Mm-hmm. No matter if it's a little Chihuahua or uh, a German Shepherd, you know they're just not yeah. good with dogs and panic. So mm-hmm. if you have a dog, the best thing to do is to take it out of the house. A cat. You're not going to remove the cat. So yeah. you, you just – you hope the cat doesn't attack anybody or go crazy. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a friendly cat. Most cats are. I haven't come across a, a crazy cat. But um, but yeah, so a dog, you especially want to try to remove them from the house completely yeah. if yeah. possible. I understand it's not always. Uh, another big one, smoke. Oh, sure. If uh, Now – most people get it now that the that they shouldn't be smoking in their house mm-hmm. because it, it'll uh, it'll cost them thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. No doubt about it. Um, sometimes though, it's my house. I'm going to do what the hell I want. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a had a seller not too long ago who um, I, I said so. I, I smell smoke. Okay, what, what should we do? Well, 
we need to replace the carpet. You're going to need to repaint the walls. You're going to need to do this and this in order to get rid of the smell. He said, great, happy to do it. Wow. He Mm -hmm. did it. I came over to sign paperwork with him. And as we were sitting at the table uh, filling out the paperwork, he lit a cigarette and was smoking. Oh, no. no. (laughs) After all that work. (laughs) I thought to myself, oh, boy, he just did all that work and it's kind of – Blow it for nothing. Oh, uh, the house sold, but um, yeah, I, I think we might have left some money on the table there. Oh, but ouch, yeah. But regardless, um, so we talked about getting carpets cleaned. Um, you know, the kitchen can sometimes be the the best spot, and sometimes it can be the worst spot because depending what your food tastes are, mm-hmm. you know, during Lent, if you're uh, Big Catholic, then you're having fish every Friday, <laughs> yep. and boy, the mm-hmm. fried fish can really stink Indeed. up a house. Yep. And uh, uh, and then some, you know, if you like to cook with spices and things, those things can embed themselves in carpet and paint. And yeah. so it's trying to be aware of that. So um, paying attention to all that as we're walking around the house to make sure that we're not missing anything. Um, now we head down in the basement. What is uh, What's the number one offender? for basements when you walk down there that you're like, whoa. Hmm. Well, for me, it's bugs. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's uh, not but, good. Yeah. yeah. But, but the creepy, I, I, the creepy basement syndrome is kind of where my head is at. Yeah, if you're yeah. in a Michigan basement, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm usually crouched over because those ceilings are, <laughs> they feel like they're five foot tall, but they're probably six. Yeah. So I'm, I'm crouched over, hunched over, walking around, trying to look at stuff. But no, what, where I was going with that was, must. Oh, sure. Yeah. The yeah. must and sometimes the mildew smell that, mm-hmm. you, that you run into in a basement. Now, try to figure out with the seller, why is that? Where is that coming from? Sometimes it's just the way the basement smells mm-hmm. and it just needs a dehumidifier down there mm-hmm. to sort of uh, get rid of that excess humidity. Sometimes it's because there's a lot of moisture around the home and it, it, it is what it is. Other times- Maybe there's been water penetration in the basement, yeah. and it's something that happens during a rainstorm. So we have that conversation because if I smell it, darn sure a buyer's going to smell it and a buyer's agent's yeah, going to smell yeah, it. And yeah. we might as well address the 600-pound gorilla in the room so that at least I know what we're looking at because those are questions as a listing agent you're going to get. Yeah. Why is the why is the basement um, – what why what is this smell? What what's going on down there? We we can smell it. Is there mold that were that were that was treated or what what's happening? So yeah. we try to have that discussion to head that off. Yeah. And basements are one of those pain points, you know, foundations, you know, that's always top of mind. And I think the first reaction if I'm a buyer and I and I encounter a smell like that, I'm gonna think the worst. First, yeah, I'm going to think it, it, it smells like dampness down here because the foundation is failing, and that may not be true, but that's where my head is at, and I, I have to believe that my thought process is not a lot different than a lot of buyers, and so it behooves a seller to do something about that. It does because yeah. if, if I throw my buyer agent hat on for a second, mm-hmm. if I smell that, yeah, oh. I'm on a hunt. I'm looking for water penetration yeah. somewhere, evidence of it. I'm looking at the floor, the walls, mm-hmm. uh, windows. I'm looking for it on behalf of my client because sure. I want to find out what it is and where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I want to jump back just a second because we were talking about pet odors. Um, what I come across a lot, and I don't think people realize, are exotic pets. Your okay. snakes and lizards, yeah. they stink. <laughs> and yeah. fish tanks, too, mm-hmm. stink if you're not cleaning them regularly. So that's another thing that we have a conversation about is yeah. make sure you clean those aquariums regularly. Um <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, I, one other thing. Uh, well, there's two other things I want to get to, but we're running out of time. So I'll just we'll touch on this real quick. Um, when we're dealing with dark rooms, and sometimes we just have those because because of the way they're facing. Sometimes you have a bedroom or a room that faces north that mm-hmm. doesn't get a lot of sunlight, a lot of natural light, and so it's just naturally dark. So if we're not talking, if we've done the prerequisite things, discussions we've talked about. Okay, maybe a lighter paint or brighter light fixture. If that if that's not doing it, then mm-hmm. we look at other things. Well, could we maybe change out the door so it's a frosted glass door, and okay. maybe that'll let in some natural light? Could we maybe um, maybe do some uh, 
uh, uh, sun tunnel skylights. Mm, so it's not yeah. your typical skylight. You, know, you cut a big hole in the roof and you got this big window coming down. No, these sun tunnel, these are small things that go into a roof mm-hmm. and it brings down natural light into a room. So it's naturally bright. So you feel like you're walking into a brighter room before you even turn on the lights. The things are amazing. Wow. They really help dark rooms mm-hmm. and it works great in bathrooms too. Uh, uh, I've come across huh. those in bathrooms and they're not expensive. They're not expensive as a skylight. Really? Like, yeah, they're they're really really they do a good job. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are other things that we that we can talk about because eh, people prefer natural to artificial sure. light. It's just a given. Yeah. And if you can do something um, that's not that expensive, it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, the other last thing I wanted to just t- touch on real quick is uh, have a conversation with a seller about infestation. Mm. What happens in spring? The ants come back, the wasps come back from where they've been hibernating, mm-hmm. or the the yellow jackets. Uh, they they go back to the nest that they've built. Sometimes you don't even know that they're there. Um, ants, on the other hand, uh, you know what do we do? We we go to Home Depot and buy some solution yeah. and uh, and spray it, and yeah, they're gone. But I, my advice is always: look, if you know they're there. Get it professionally done. Mm-hmm, Just take mm-hmm. care of it. Last thing you want is somebody walking through the house and they're standing in your kitchen and here's a trail of ants walking across your yeah. floor or crawling across your countertop. Mm-hmm. It just – it kills it for that potential buyer. So um, you want to get that treated and, and just take care of it, um, you know, and and everybody freaks out when somebody finds out that they're bat – there's bats in the yeah, attic. yeah. But it's it's becoming more common here. Yeah, Bats yeah. find a way into people's attics. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. the sooner you take care of it, the better because it can be really expensive, yeah. um, to, especially the cleanup of the, the bat guava. Yeah, yeah. Boom. Mm-hmm. I guess whatever they call it. Um, <laughs> so those are – yeah, those are definitely things that, um, that we um, – you know, that we talk about. And uh, – I think it's uh, those are important things. Yeah, yeah. Well, just like anything that that you're trying to market and sell, uh, be it a car, be it a piece of art or a home, you, you gotta you gotta position it in a way that's going to appeal to the broadest section of the population, so that you get the most at bats with buyers that are willing to consider the home. Sellers have to hear that advice from a from an agent like yourself if they want to. They have competition, don't they? I mean, if if there's other homes in for sale in the neighborhood, they just have to look at those homes as competitors uh, to their product. They have a product to sell. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. And also, it, it, just to back up, if if we're if we're we were talking uh, in our last podcast about exterior influences, mm-hmm. and we were talking about neighbors. So if you have that neighbor who's got that house or overgrown shrubs. Mm-hmm. You've got to overcome that. So the more you do to your house to have it ready to sell, to have the minimal amount of um, hurdles that a buyer has to get over to get to yes, mm-hmm. to purchase your house, the easier it will be to get past that neighbor yeah, yeah, and uh, in that in that dilapidated house. So yeah, those are those are things that we we take into consideration when we're when we're talking to a seller about things that they should do, things they shouldn't do. Some mm-hmm. sellers don't want to do anything, right? They mm-hmm. just want to sell it as is. So we have that conversation. Okay, if we're selling it as is, here's. Um, Here's where it's going to cost us money. Sometimes, you know what? Sometimes it doesn't make sense to do anything. Sometimes sure. it makes sense to just sell it as is. Mm-hmm. Um, but if there's minimal things that we can do, minimal, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just to make it slightly more appealing to more buyers, then I always recommend that we do it. Yeah, they need that advice from you though, because there's a line in the sand, right? You know, you don't you don't finish that unfinished basement with the hope that I, I'm, I'm doing this so I can make more money when I sell it. You'll never get the money back. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that'll do it for for this podcast. Thanks for listening, and uh, um, well, to our uh, to our podcast, avoiding real estate turbulence. Uh, if you'd be so kind as to subscribe, review. And rate, we would appreciate it. Yeah, please share with your friends, family, and coworkers that they can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Thank you.